anything you imagine. Let's get to it. You can make anything. Have you ever made a game? No? Well, time to change that. Get ready to create a hero, an adversary, and a world to explore. Select Prop Mode. Open the Prop Gallery. Select the Characters tab to choose any character you want to be your hero. Left click to place the prop in your world. Open the Brain Editor. Welcome to the Brain Editor, where the magic really happens. Brains are a collection of code statements that tell the object how to behave. All code statements are divided into a when side and a do side. When the left side is true, do the actions on the right. Let's start with a blank brain and build your hero from scratch. First, let's give them a way to move. Select the plus to add a tile to the when side. Select the controls folder. Select the keyboard folder. Select the WASD tile. Now this line of code will execute when the WASD keys are pressed. But what will it do? Select the plus to select the movement folder. Select the move tile. You've written your first line of code. It says that when the WASD keys are pressed, the character will move. Select the back arrow to exit the brain editor. Tap the top arrow to open the pause menu. Press W, A, S, and D to see what happens. When you're done testing, press Escape. Select Edit to return to Create Mode. Select your hero. Open the Brain Editor. Let's give your hero the ability to jump. Select the plus. This is the Tile Picker, where all code tiles can be found. Tiles are all organized into folders by their functionality. Select the Controls folder. Select the Keyboard folder. Select Create Key Press. Which key should make your hero jump? Select the Plus to add a tile. Select the Movement folder. Select the Jump Tile. The line you just wrote says, Whenever this key is held, jump. However, your hero will jump constantly if that key is held. Let's add one more tile to change that. This will be a modifier, meaning it affects the tile that comes before it. Select the plus to add a tile to the when side. Select the modifiers fold. Select the pressed tile. This means your hero will only jump when the key is first pressed. You'll have to release the key before you can jump again. Your hero's brain is missing one more key thing, a camera. This is why the game doesn't move with their actions. Select the plus to add a tile to the do side. Select the next arrow. Select the camera folder. Select the follow camera tile. Because the when side of this line is empty, now the camera will always follow the player. Let's try out your new camera. Select the back arrow to exit the brain editor. The play button is a shortcut that lets you jump straight into test mode. Try jumping and moving the mouse to control the camera. When you're done testing, press escape.
Select your hero. Open the brain editor. Let's make your hero attack when you click the left mouse button. Select the plus to add a tile to the wet. Select the can. Select the mouse. Select the. Select the plus. Select the combat. Select the attack. Now your hero will attack. Let's make your hero do a ranged attack when. Select the plus. Select the controls folder. Select the mouse folder. Select the right mouse button. Select the plus to add a tile to the do side. Select the combat for select the shoot tile. Now your hero will shoot when you click the right mouse button. The default projectile is a fireball. Time to test out your code again. Select the back arrow. Select the play button to test your level. Click the left and right mouse buttons to see what happens. When you're done testing, press escape.
you're off to a good start. But this will go a lot faster with a bigger brush. Drag the slider to change the size of your brush. Keep expanding until your mountain is lofty and majestic. Click here when you're done. The expand brush is great for adding terrain, but sometimes you need to carve it away. Let's switch to erode and carve some contours into your mountain. Every sculpt brush has two sides that do opposite things. Click the sculpt icon to flip your brush from expand to erode. The erode brush reduces the terrain it touches. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the brush across your mountain to add contours and remove excess terrain. Don't worry about making mistakes. It's really safe to experiment and try new things in Project Spark because it's really easy to undo those actions. Click the arrow buttons on either side of the undo bar to jump forward or backwards one action. You can also click and drag to scrub through the bar to get to the exact point you want. Let's reduce your brush's intensity so you can shape your mountain in finer detail. Drag the intensity slider to change how strongly your brush use both the expand and erode brushes to sculpt your mountain into a geological wonder. Click here when you're done. Let's add some color to your mountain. Select the paint tool. Ah yes, paint mode. This is how you add different colors and materials to your world. Click to switch materials using the paint palette at the bottom of the screen. The arrow button right above the palette opens the paint gallery, which has even more materials to select from. Hold the left mouse button to paint some magic into your world. To paint, hold the left mouse button as you move your brush over the terrain. Paint until your mountain is vivid and awe-inspiring. Click here when you're done.
You've made an interesting landscape, but how will your hero know where to go? The solution is simple. It's time to make a path. First, select the second material. Drag the slider to change the size of your brush. Now, paint over the terrain with your ground material. Click here when you're done. All right, now it's time to pick a contrasting material for your path. Let's pick something from the gallery. Let's replace this slot on the paint palette. Open the materials gallery. This is the paint gallery. It contains all of the different materials you can use in your world. Choose a material, then click the back arrow. Paint a path to connect all of the elements in your world. Click here when you're done. Great path, but select prop mode. Open the prop gallery. This is the prop gallery where you can find all of the props care. You can filter your view by prop type using select the coin prop. Left click to place the prop in your world. The options surrounding this prop will let you change its properties. Give it more coins equals more fun. So let's clone that coin to make a bunch of copies. Change an object's behavior, alter its physics, combat, locomotion, and more. All right. This is also where you can delete the object. Select clone to do left click to place as many coins around your world as you want. When you're done, press escape to exit clone mode. Almost done, but your path needs a little vegetation. How about a tree? Open the prop gallery. Click on the search box in the upper right. Pick a tree to add to your world. Left click to place the prop in your world. Not bad, but how about we make it a bit bigger and rotate it a little. Drag the scale icon to change the tree size. Click here when you're done. Drag the green rotate icon at the base of the tree to adjust its ori. Click here when you're done. Now that it's bigger, maybe we need to reposition it a little? Drag the colored arrows to move the tree in the X, Y, or Z directions. You can also drag the yellow swirl icon to keep it snapped to the terrain. Click here when you're done. Awesome job. Now your hero has a summit to conquer, a path to follow, treasure to find, and battles to fight.
You're going to create a goal for the player that will end the game once they achieve it. Open the prop gallery. Click on the search box in the upper right and search for flag. Select the village flag prop. Left click to place the prop in your world. We'll make a brain for the flag that will do two things. Detect when the player has reached it and then display a victory message ending the game. Open the Brain Editor. First, we have to detect when the player reaches the flag using the bump sensor. Select the plus to add a tile to the when side. Select the sensors folder. Select the bump tile. Now this line will run when any object bumps into it. Since you only want to sense the player, you need to add a player tile to filter the sensor's results. Select the plus to add select the objects for select the player tile. Now that the when side checks if the player has reached the flag, the do side should tell this brain to switch over to a victory state. So far, all of the code you've written has been on page one of this brain. Every brain has at least one page, but you're going to use an additional page to enter a victory state. Select the plus to add a tile to the do side. Select the next arrow. Select the brains folder. Select the switch page tile. Select the plus to add it. Select the next arrow. Select the brains folder. Select the next page tile. Switching pages is like changing states, like going from being asleep to being awake. You can't be both at once. Switch page next page tells this brain to stop running the current page and start running the next page. Page 1 is done for now, so you can switch over to page 2 and start coding the victory state. Navigate to the next page in information, statistics, and challenges that inspire. Welcome to page 2. The code on this page will not run until the brain switches from page 1 to page 2. Anything you want to happen after the player reaches the flag should go on this page. A good place to start is with a simple victory message. Select the plus to add a tile to the do side. Select the appearance folder. Select the display folder. Select the display tile. Next, you need to create a piece of custom text to display. Select the plus to add it. Select the values folder. Select the text folder. Select the new text tile. What will be displayed when players reach the flag? You can also modify where the message will show up and how big it will be. Select the plus to add a tile to the do side. Select the modifiers folder. Select the positioning folder. Select the screen location folder. Select the screen center tile. Select the plus to add a tile to the do side. Select the modifiers folder. Select the font size folder. Before you add anything else, you should test your goal to make sure everything works so far. Select the back arrow to exit the brain editor. Select the play button to spark you've leveled up. Gaining more levels grants rewards and access to more awesome stuff in the marketplace. Press escape when you're done testing. Your goal works, but it doesn't actually end the game yet. Select the flag. Open the brain editor. 
navigate to the next page in this frame. After the victory text is displayed, the screen should fade to black and the game should end. Select the plus to add it. Select the appearance full. Select the select the fade tile. Now set how long the fade out should take. Select the select select the transition time tile. Select the plus to add a tile to select the select the select the new how many seconds should the fade out take? To actually end the game, simply use the game over tile. Select the plus to add it. Select the appearance. Select the dis select the game over tile. The when side of this line is empty, which means the game over tile will run immediately when this brain switches to page two. You can use a countdown timer to delay this line's execution by a few seconds, which will give the screen a chance to fade out and display the victory message. Select the plus to add a tile. Select the tile. Select the countdown timer tile. Select the plus to add a tile to the when side. Select the values folder. Select the number folder. Select the new number. How many seconds should now this line won't run until the countdown timer is finished counting the specified number of seconds. Time to put your game over transition to the test. Select the back arrow to exit the brain editor. Select the play button to test your level. When in test mode, the game over tile returns you to create mode. In play mode, the player will go to the end game screen. Thanks for checking out our tutorial preview for 3D Adventure. Check back in future releases for more tutorials and even bigger adventures. Don't forget to save your level from the pause menu, then head back into play mode to check it out.